So, Donovan Kalbnes, you are the world amateur champion. So, welcome Thank to you. the first episode of A Beer of the Bike with Inky and SBR Triathlon Magazine. Thank you very much for the lovely intro. Well, Donovan, the pleasure is all ours, man. Um, they, I spoke to a guy earlier today and we were just talking about triathlon and life. And he said to me, a guy like Donovan Kalbnes, he says, like, how does he do that? The Oaks a successful businessman, a CA, he's got a family that seems to love him. He trains and he travels and he flies like we all do. And the Oak has got it all together. How's that possible? For me, the secret is we try and plan a training week on a Sunday together as a family. I mean, I, I like one of my uh, secret powers is actually cooking. So on a Sunday, I like to uh, you can cook as cook well. And, <laughs> cook and cook and prep for the week and during that time I think me and my wife has a good understanding of when we eat she also trains quite a bit so does my kids so we try and plan our key sessions on a Sunday what's happening for the week and then during the week it's just trying to be flexible and I, I like to be prepared so on a Sunday I know exactly what my key sessions will be for the week I'll plot them out and I try and put them in and to build work and stuff, I'm fairly flexible in my job, luckily. So I can build, I can have a one or two shorter days and I make up the days on other longer days when I put in some more work. So yeah, for me, it's just proper planning prevents poor performance. And yeah, and, and I love what I do. So both work-wise and training-wise, for me, it's not much of an effort, to be honest. Yeah, proper planning and passion, all the P's coming through there. So Don... 100%. Who's involved with that process? Like, who actually puts your plan schedule together? Have you got a coach? Have you got a business coach, maybe? Is it just you? Is Roseanne involved in this? Like, there's a magic here. Do we want to know how it works? Yeah, so my coaching, my program is done by Richard Lowry from Matrix. He also helped me to get to Kona in very good shape. I mean, we get along really, really well. But to, to be honest, do, do when you get eye on a good week, at the moment, I try and do it between 21 and 24 hours a week. For, uh, age, for an age grouper with a full-time job and a family, that's very tough. So it's very hard for him and for me to plan my weeks far in advance. So we chat very closely. I mean, I'll tell him on Tuesday, I have a gap. I can do a long bike, let's schedule and chop and change and plan. Same with my wife. So I, I, I do most, I try not to do training in family time. I don't train early mornings anymore. I get up with the kids when they leave for school. That's when I get on the bike generally. Now, with after COVID, things change quite a bit. I mean, I can't swim in the morning anymore. So I swim at night quickly after work. So most mornings, the bike, I see them before school, wait till they leave. And then I plan my days like that. I mean, so when you push big hours, I mean, there's a lot of planning involved on the training. So me and Richard work very closely to plan out weeks. But we don't plan much further than three, four days in advance because of trying to fit everything in and on the business side I also do have a, have a guy that I work with very closely good friend of mine Shane Daniel that is my mentor on work and life related topics which is that, is that, by any chance, is that Shane Daniel. from is that Shane the mountain biker a few years ago yes Shane mountain Daniel biker? yes correct 100% oh, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we we do a weekly we do a weekly long ride in midweek, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, where we solve all the world's problems in four or five hours. And that is my key session for the week in terms of just balancing perspectives, which is not only about training, it's much more. And he's, he's an animal too. In fact, I think 15, 20 years ago when I started Mountain Bike Magazine, he would have been, a, if we had had Zoom meetings and, and Facebook Lives, he would have been an interview candidate. It's a, Boston, so I, well dressed, a, lecker house, he's styling that guy. As a side job, I do a bit of coaching, advising. He's one of my athletes, Shane Daniel, and we're attempting the world one-hour TT record with him next year, 2021, with Woof Watt Bike in England. So he's still an animal. He'll still leave most young men far, far behind. So yeah, a very good guy. It sounds like there's something in the making there because I've heard that you're one of your previous coaches and good friend and the namesake in Derbs, Donovan Van Gelder wants to have a go at the age group uh, one hour record. So these bullies are coming back hard, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, Don is training hard as well. I follow him on Zwift. I see the man is keeping himself young these days. So I worry when this lockdown thing's over, he's going to be an animal. 
And I, I can tell you, he's already made his mission, his planning. He's coming to race to Stanford. Two years ago, Matt Troutman pipped the two of you, and you beat Donovan. And now Donovan wants to have a go. It's two days after his 50th birthday. He's one of those oaks that no matter how old he is, I'll never write him off. I mean, I'm still scared of racing him. So, uh, but I look forward to it. I'll meet him there. I'll meet him there. Yeah, lekker, man. So, so our plans are for you. I mean, you come back, you're going to defend your title. But let's talk a little bit about, you know, people want to know what makes this guy so tough. I think your unexpected and highly inspirational uh, off-the-cuff moment where you picked up another guy's bike and rode in two sh sizes, shoes too small, broke your feet up and then ran a half marathon to come back and win Race to Stanford was, it just says so much about your, the resilience in your character. So, um, hey, I don't know, maybe you want to talk us through what inspires you to keep going when you've got the odds stacked against you like you had that day. I, I think, you know, for me, it's key is to enjoy what you do. It makes life a lot easier, both in work, family, good old saying, happy wife, happy life. If things is happy around you and positive, then it's fairly easy to uh, do the things that you enjoy doing. So for me, it's not really... Uh, uh, I still remember that so feet. It was uh, unpleasant. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, for Don't me. The photographer was, uh, caught that. I, I, one of my promises I made to myself when I, I started triathlon is that I would never ride any more trainer because I thought I was for losers. And then I uh, was in a car accident on the way to jailbreak in 2015 on a bike accident. The car knocked me out and I broke my shoulder. And I was forced on the indoor trainer. And at that time, I made a promise to myself that if you have, if you have the opportunity to train and just because the conditions are bad or it's not something you don't like, you must take it and claim it and use it. So I don't like complaining at all anymore. I do what I can with what I have. And you know, as, as long as I love getting up to train and it's not much of a hack for me, I'll keep on going. Yeah? For me... And I look at Oaks like Van Gelder and Shane Daniel who's pushing 50s and going stronger than ever. So there's still, still got a good 10, 11 years of racing in me. So that, that I look forward to. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, looking at this beautiful family of yours, obviously they inspire you. Um, you. You love what you do. You love them. And I think you would probably like to have started pro a few years ago if you'd known just how good you could be. I mean, I followed your journey closely. I... I was there in 2000 and maybe 13 or 14 when you broke 2013 your chain. Or, well, first Ironman 2013, weighing 98 kgs. Good times. <laughs> yes. yeah. And I wonder you broke your chain. I remember you sitting on the side of the road, looking at us on the press truck going, it's over again. I think you had three mechanicals in three years, maybe? Uh, three, yeah. Uh, 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 2013 was my first Ironman. And I uh, after that, uh, I think... One of the things is, uh, when did I decide I want to do this triathlon thing? I, I, I went, after 2013, I went to Clan William Triathlon, the triathlon that was always more for the piss up afterwards than the race. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so I raced that thing and I came 13th. And it, that day it felt for me like I won the race. It was a big day for me, big breakthrough. And that was also the start of me getting extremely cocky in this triathlon thing. And I thought I can win an Ironman, no problem. If I can come 13 to Clan William, surely Ironman is a good thing. So I went hard 2014 and I DNF because I was sick. 2015, I went back even cockier and I broke down on the road. That's when you saw me. Then I went back 2016, even more cocky and I DNF'd again because I just was nowhere. <laughs> I didn't feel good. So... <laughs> And then 2017, I decided, okay, that's, this is not working for me. So I took a bit of a break. And then, yeah, I came back. And only, I only ever had one good Ironman, or two now. One was 2019 Africa Champs, which was still my best race. Still ranks higher than Kona for me. And then Kona, which was yeah, six months so, later. So there's a bit of a Mark Allen in you. I'm sure you know the Mark Allen story. Six times he went and he failed. And he then yeah. got to terms with the island. He looked inside himself. He went to a shaman, an Indian shaman. He got to know all about the inner self. He, he, he literally took an introspective stare in the mirror. He changed his mindset. And that's the year that he won the Iron War and came back strong. And 
So I've got two Ironman finish. I got two Ironman finish times: thirteen hours, thirteen minutes, and then eight hours, fourteen. The next one. So that is my. Uh, <laughs> that is I got no in between it. So I didn't have the other ones. I was too arrogant, and I didn't even get too close to the finish line. So that, that's. Yeah. Look, so, you had seriously good opposition. I mean, when you when you raced that Durban race, twenty nineteen, not Durban in B, you had. A Dubai, an ex-pro who's won Dubai, won Ironman Durban, won a whole lot of stuff. The top five amateurs were so hot. That it was the greatest field. I personally got off the back. We couldn't get onto the pro circuit. We came back and watching the amateur race was better than watching the pro race. That amateur race was sensational. And you, you handed it to those oaks. So you talked about the confidence earlier. I think if you have to look at Tiger Woods, you name the pros, the uh, Ferrari drivers, the, 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 all, all the top pros in sport have a level of self-confidence that belies anything else. It's an absolute belief that they can do it. So I think that must have contributed something somewhat to your success. But that day when you took those guys on, you sat on the front. I remember you going to the front on the bike and I thought, oh, no, surely not. But I think somehow you intimidated those guys and they didn't expect you to have the run you had. You yeah, are, uh, like I said, uh, 2019 Ironman Africa Champs will go down as my best race to date. I hope I can top it one day. I mean, for me, that was a better day than Kona, both in terms of, I mean, the support on the race course was insane. I mean, I just remember I came off the bike first. I didn't expect it. And I went on the run and Stormo, my good mate, Norwegian mate, in our races pro came running past me at 3.20 a K in the first 10K, and I thought, geez, this oak, uh, he's going to leave me in the dust. And I just left him. Yeah. And I knew uh, my goal was to try and run a three-hour marathon, so I knew what my pace was, and I was just plugging away. I mean, after the first lap, he was five minutes up on me, and I thought, this is over. And I just carried on running, and I mean, at, as we entered halfway through the third lap, I remember I was calling on the side of the road saying, one minute 30 to Stormer and I thought, she's either, I'm not running any faster, so he must be suffering a little bit. So I carried on running and became 30 seconds. And at the start of the last lap, I pulled up next to him and I remember him asking me, which age group am I racing? We didn't know who I was. And I said, listen, I actually know who you are. We're we racing the same one. And we ran side by side for about three, four Ks. And I mean, I decided when we got to the middle mark by the boardwalk there, I'm just going to keep it stick and not look back at all. And I mean, and I just carried on running and I just didn't get tired that day. I still don't know what happened. I ran, ran a 256 marathon. I just, and I could feel like I could run another 10. It was just one of those days that I just, I don't think I'll ever have again. And I think uh, it was the, the unicorn yeah. that, that we, uh, yeah, the thing you don't find at all. Well, Donovan, um, you spoke in our interview uh, two years ago, this was. Um, you were talking about a plan. This was still before you achieved these things. So on the right, there's you in Kona. When you went to Kona, I know you told me on a WhatsApp that I'm, I'm going to try and win this thing. I didn't take you seriously for a second. But you got <laughs> there and you, you turned on something. I mean, what made you think that you could go to an island that's famous for its wind, its heat, and all the rest, and take on the best in the world, who, of which some of the guys we all know could have questionable inputs, whatever it was, which turned out to be something that affected the post-event results. But what gave you the confidence to take them on? Uh, from, I always only said I'll go to Kona if I either win my age group or if I at least make podium. And I feel Kona sometimes, and no disrespect to other athletes there, I think sometimes it's a bit easy to go. I would only ever have gone if I could give myself a chance to win. I mean, I, I can't spend 200 grand on having a holiday and ride, to ride a bike. I can then I'll go ride in the French Alps or whatever. So for me, I needed confirmation of a good Ironman behind me, which Ironman South Africa gave me. And then I studied Mr. Buckingham, who I look up to a lot, and Mr. Dan Clues, who subsequently broke Carl's record in 2018. I studied their times and I knew what I had to do in terms of swim. I knew what I had to do in terms of bike pound. I knew what I had to do in terms of the marathon. And, that, and I knew, more importantly, that it's something that I can hold. Uh, for me, I can't race in the cold weather at all. Um, that's also why this year's challenge for me was Norseman, purely because of the 
how hard the race is. And because it's cold, cold, I can't do very well. So it would mean an extra challenge for me, something to adapt to. And I, I love racing in the heat. Kona was never a concern for me. Durban on a good 30 odd degree day, I can go run midday, two hours, no problem. I enjoy it. So the heat was never that big a factor for me. But yeah, you know, most importantly, I had to give myself the confidence that what they put out, I could achieve. And I felt I could. I mean, I was a little bit off the record, about four minutes, I think, in the end. So I'll have to go back and redo it. I mean, and that will, that will remain the goal. I mean, as an age grouper, there's not much other than breaking personal records and records set by others. So I would like to go back and try and do it. So, so definitely that, come day, back. that was the biggest day in your career from a results point of view. You came in third, which we all thought was <clears throat> unbelievable. And then it should have been your day in the sun, but the time showed that two other gents had put you to the post. Here's a picture we found on Instagram. Posted by, I think, one of your fans saying... He was the, he, no, he was posted by the guy who came second, actually. He did it himself. Okay. Yeah, took so, it on the chin. Yeah, uh, he took it on the chin. He was actually a very nice guy, a German guy that I met there. Uh, the, the, the big disappointment for me is not... Uh, now, the, the greatest disappointment is that the overall age group at Kona gets treated a bit like a rock star. He gets the green jacket, the same as the Oak, it get, wins the PGA Golf Tour. He gets called up, he meets the main Oaks, he gets a free helmet, he got a few sponsors. So, I'll play, I don't know, I would like to go back to have that moment. I mean, I don't know if, I, if it's ever been possible. I know ever, no age grouper has ever defended the uh, age group title will be back to back. So, it will be a tall task for me. I mean, and it's a very difficult thing to try and achieve, but... Like I said, I'll definitely go back. I'd rather go down guns blazing and forever wonder what it might have been. So I hope well, October 2021, when this thing's over, to go stand there and receive my jacket and my uh, yeah. bowl. Cheers and that. Absolutely. 100%. So now definitely. you're going to be carrying any, I mean, perhaps no one's ever, ever defended their title, but no one's ever been robbed of their title. So perhaps Probably true. And I'm also, and I think, I think I'm also the only guy in history to ever come third, second, and first in the same race. So, I mean, this was um, <laughs> something nice to have. Yeah. No, you just sat back and watched yourself move up to the hot seat. 100%. Just needed a bit of time and patience. Yeah. So, Donovan, we all know that you put in some insane workouts. I mean, you're not called the what bazooka, Frank and his tank, the Dutch, for nothing. You put in sessions that other people want to cry and run, walk out of the room and say, I can't keep up with this. Thing. I personally am not the kind of guy who can sit in my house all day and you sit in one spot, even no matter how strong my fan is, especially in derbs where it's hot. But you put in some proper indoor sessions. Can you show us your man cave and show us where you put all the damage in or all that time? You are so my this is the story behind my man cave. I when I won Africa Champs, I decided my treat for Kona will be to build me a man cave to train in for Kona. The unfortunate part is that building only started the week I left for Kona. So I never got to train in the cave at all for Kona. So my mom was here while they were building. And yeah, so that's also more motivation for me to go back one day because I can actually use the cave for the right reasons. So, yeah, I've been, yeah. so there was a little treat to myself and uh, with permission of my wife, obviously, is to build this thing on top of the garage. So it's about, I'll show you some pics, but it's on top of a double garage. So staircase and then, yeah, we just, I missed, I kid, can I show you around with a Yeah, camera? please, we'd love to see so How I just uh, what man it's ever. Well, as you come up the stairs from the bottom, I'll start by showing my uh, little motivation every day I champion. come up, which is my bowl from Kona. Uh, the Omega, which, which is still third place. I'm waiting for the number one to come. Are they gonna send you one? Yes, sir, they are, and my jacket. This oh, is great. my uh, Africa Champs jacket, which I'm very proud of, and for my sure. best race. As you come around the corner, it's got the setup, the wife's bike, wife's little bike, treadmill in the middle. Does she sit next and to you and keep you company, Don? We actually did our first uh, joint session on Sunday. It was a bit of a nightmare because we only had one iPad, so only one of us could Zwift. The other one had to ride freestyle. <laughs> I offered for riding freestyle, and I got a like a, a TV setup, so it was a bit of Netflixing going on. 
But you also, uh, we plan on trying to do, and I got a little, I uh, got my old zip up there. Oh, you got the speed weapon for the old timers, Glenn Go and for friend. The, for, the, for the old He's timers, us. yeah. A Respect to the old timers. A little kitchen, and then there's a shower bathroom area. No one wants to see a stinky hoe after the race. So, yeah, so I'm just trying to, trying to keep it out so I can spend some time up here. Yeah, it's nice. And your wife is obviously Roseanne Geldmeis. She was the podium at Race to Stanford last year. So, once again, People say, oh, well, you've got to choose. He's going to be the selfish athlete and she's going to look after the kids. But again, you guys have got this nail because she's training and you're training and, and you train together. And your kids even do triathlon now. Yeah, How yeah, come they, they just thought that they see you suffering? They use the treadmill as well. We're we very fortunate. We've got uh, 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 our domestic lady, Tan, who lives with us. I mean, she's amazing with the kids. So she, in the mornings, on Saturday mornings, when we ride long, she's in the inside at 4 o'clock. Watch them. So we can be back at 9, 10. So, I mean, in that, I mean, we're very fortunate and blessed to have that. I mean, without that, there will be no training happening. Yeah. So most mornings, she helps us quite a lot. And that that gives us the the leeway to train a bit. And I think uh, the kids like, they come sit here and watch me suffer off and, and laugh a bit. It's good. I think they see what it's all about. And they, and I, and, I, and yeah, so hope they one day will do a bit of some of this For stuff. Sure. Look, I mean, the, the, fact, the fact that they do triathlon is quite amazing because you think they'd be scared of it. But at a young age, they've obviously recognized that you're able to multitask and that you're a champion and that they can emulate you. I mean, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than a person can do in life than be a great role model to their children. You all know for sure. I mean, I, I'm blessed. I mean, my daughter is at that stage where she can hit the pool with me for three, four Ks, no problem. She already dusts her mother. For now, I can still stay ahead of her. But really? I don't know for how long. My son is extremely cocky. I mean, he thinks he can outbike me already, but he can't. But he believes that. But he's still very young. But I think one day he should be. You'll definitely take on the sport. I mean, you know, so uh, I, I and I, I can't wait till I'm 60 to race side by side with him. It'll be dreams come true. It'll be lekker. When I, yeah. I'm in Kona fighting for the 60-year-old uh, world champ title, my son, racing, son racing pro. That'll be ideal. That would be the dream right there. So, yeah, so did, he, he probably loves cars like you. I know you like to collect uh, model cars. Not model cars, the real thing. Old classic model cars, should I say. There's one of your favorites. Yeah. I've got, yeah, so I, I like, that is a, a very special car to me. It's my grandfather's car. I'm the second owner of that thing in the 1961 Austin Apache which is one of a collection that was very big, but it's, I, I trimmed it down quite a bit now. I don't have the time. I mean, I acknowledge being, I've got family one, work two, triathlon three, and that is 98% of my time. I don't have much, there's not much time left for socializing and playing with cars and bikes anymore, but my hobby is collecting super bikes, two strokes, four strokes of the times when I grew up, the 90s. So in terms of my cars as well, cars that I collect is, I got Jetta VR6s, Golf GTIs, all the stuff that people think is boy toy racer stuff. But if you, if you know, then you know. If you know, you know. And you know, I mean, you're an investment guy. Well, I think first and foremost, you're a chartered accountant. You work in the financial industry. <clears throat> you're analyzing the markets. You know what's going on in the world. The bigger picture, we often chat offline on WhatsApp about the struggles you're facing in business and with the economy. I mean, we've just come through lockdown, South African economy on its knees, the global economy on its knees. Things like this. These are investments. Where are the smart investments now? What should we be doing? What's your advice? The short advice to us triathletes who want to spend everything we've got on triathlon and still stay alive? Well, I, as I said earlier, I strive on positivity. The one thing that gets me down about this country at the moment is a lot of negativity. Not only this country, in the world because of the situation in terms of COVID. But I mean, I think the biggest risk to our country is the lack of stable policy, which is a big impact on our currency. I mean, for anyone importing anything, I think that is the biggest concern. I mean, I'm in, fuel, in the fuel game, and I mean, with a very weak rand and dollar currency these causes big problem for us so for me i don't think i will be able to leave this country easily but i definitely think it's wise to if you have extra money 
to try and invest a bit offshore. It's easy. It's not as difficult as people think. I mean, I think just through just diversi diversifying away from South Africa it doesn't mean you unpatriotic or trying to leave, but I mean, uh, to cover a bit of risk for yourself is not a bad thing. Sure, and that's also one of the reasons. Right. And that's also one of the reasons I decided to get rid of all my toys that I had, which is a fairly big one, and rather use the money elsewhere for now. Well, but yeah, I, I think. I think. Let's talk about elsewhere. We've got, um, I believe, even though you had a pretty solid weapon for quite a while. You've uh, you've got something special right now. Yeah, I am after Kona. I uh, got approached by Argon and uh, Terry from Apex Multisport to try and uh, see if we could put something together in terms of like a ambassador's transaction. And they were I was very fortunate. He gave me this thing. And another one, which I'm busy building up yet, I haven't had it done yet. So I'm very, very keen to race it. One of my ideas for next year is also, and the reason we opted on this bike was, it's UCI legal. I myself would like to give the SAE PT champs a go next year and go to Worlds for biking only. Just a bit of a challenge for myself. It doesn't mean I'm not by any means saying I'm going to win it. I'm going to obviously try and do it. I'm not going to rock up for the show. But I will, it's going to be just for a bit of diversification for myself to put a challenge to myself out there. I mean, South Africa's got phenomenal TT bikers. The guy in my, the guy in my age group for cycling TT actually holds the world TT one hour record as well. So it will be a nice challenge for me. Who's that, Tony? Think, oh, I okay. forget his name. I will no, I'll send it to you in WhatsApp. I can't yeah. remember. But he I mean, the try it. Triathletes made a big impression on the SA time trial champs. I mean, people like Jody, Brad, there's quite a few guys who did very well. And yeah. I think maybe this is something that more triathletes should think about. Just to, like Simon Lessing always used to swim as top swimmers, bike with the pro bikers, run with the runners. Maybe the TT thing is something we should all have a go at and uh, raise the game a little. And yeah, no, 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 the sport, I mean, cycling, I give the guys, and when you go to these races, the SA Champs, there's 10 hours doing the TT. It'll be nice to have a nice big field, make it more competitive. More competition, we push each other a bit harder. Hopefully, we get more competitive on the world stage. I mean, that's the goal. And why not? I like to dream big. I will, uh, I don't think anyone should ever limit themselves just to here. I mean, if you can, if you have the means and you've got the, Goals, go for it, push. So that'll be my goal. If I do well at essays, I'll definitely go to World Ski. Wow. And who knows? Who knows that that yeah, that'll be awesome. While we got the bike up on screen, I know a lot of the tech guys out there will be going, hey, what's he got on there? What chain rings does the beast ride? I see you got a Praxis Works, you got deep sections. Talk us through your choices there. Yeah, so I, uh, when I spec the bike, I decided to treat myself a little bit. So I chose the best parts from all my, uh, all the pro athletes out there. So suicide wheels raced by um, uh, Patrick Lang. Trotman, Fred Trotman. Yeah, Patrick Lang. So yeah, and I, and I kitted it out with a ride 2x12, new SRAM Red AXS ETAP. Oh, ETAP. Hey, it's a luxury, hey, Rolls Royce. 10, 10, 33 at the back and a 54, 39 in the front. Would like to go a little bit bigger. I'll go bigger for race day. Just for now, for training, so I don't blow my old knees off. I'll keep the chain in small. And yeah. then the front is just the front, uh, the front end I'm playing around with because there's very tight restrictions for UCI legal teething. So you can't just be, do your own thing anymore. So it's now I'm going to try and do the setup as close to UCI legal as possible. There's a lot of rules around length. You can be over the front end, so it's like a bit complicated now, but I'll try and there's not more. So my setup will be significantly different for Iron Man with the TT. So I have to find the good mean in between and try and see what works best. Yeah, so I mean, you just continue to tinker as all the top athletes do, keep trying things and working it out. Now, one of the things that Richard Laurie, that you mentioned earlier, your coach, he's a big fan of the of the praying mantis position, getting behind the hands and dropping your head and relaxing your shoulders. I've spent time with him. He's a great coach for a young guy, just by the way, which is amazing. 
So I see there you've got the handlebars up uh, upright. Classic. Um, are you going that route more and more? You yeah, are. Unfortunately, I'm not blessed with being flexible at all. Um, I must be the most unflexible oak biggie. So I really battle with getting extremely low on the TT bike. So that's one of my focuses for this next few months is I've got one of the uh, partners of Argon is a thing called No-Show, which is a CDA measurement device, which measure your aero on the bike so my goal for the next few months will be to spend time with that to find a good ideal position and to when lockdown opens me and my good mate Shane Daniel is also going over to the UK to spend some time in the wind tunnel and actually try and dial in our positions properly so I'll be trying to get a bit more scientific I think in terms of power wise I've, I've, I've got enough output in terms of power I think I can gain more speed by being a bit more scientific and just not a brute animal trying to push power without being well, I'm, I'm sure, yeah absolutely i'm sure you know that uh, our good friend gian fredino didn't have the highest power on the bike course yet he got into a transition with a lead and he held it on the run and um it was because his error i mean the guy's taller than you he's, he's six foot three and he's got himself into position on that canyon where he's He's moving at a, I mean, his average power was well below others, not well below, but others in the field. So, yeah, it's all about that position. What are you going to change if you're not that flexible? Yeah, that, that's why I'm calling, I mean, uh, that's why I'm calling on the professionals. My treat to myself and to Shane is to go, we're actually going to the guys from uh, Who Bought Bike in England to spend time with their wind tunnel. So, for them to set us up properly. I'm going to spend a day or two in the velodrome and let them guide me on how to get the best possible aero position. I think I've finally, we all go through the stage of biking is always the one that's the show. Everybody wants to push the biggest power, but the, it comes to a point where you lose so much by being forced into a position to push big power versus being aero and accepting a little bit less power and making you move faster. So, that's the route I'm going to try for the next year. As I get older, I've got to accept that I can't just keep pushing, pushing, and trying to achieve the higher FTPs. I think there's better ways to do a longer, faster bike than just... Amen yeah. to that. Let's hope that you're just listening to because that's great advice right there. Now, you are some... Yeah. Toning the bazooka down a little bit in, in four, uh, four nine more and just get aero <laughs> and try and do this thing properly. Love it. So, Don, you are basically now almost 40. When do you turn 40? Next year. I'm 39 in two months. Okay. So, one so, more. So, it's tempting to go up to 40 to 45, but what's the point if you've already won the age group world record? Have you thought about perhaps putting a little pro license together and being the oldest pro? I think Crowe is still the oldest. At, either he was 39 in nine months or he was just 40, but potentially you could be the oldest. Uh, uh, Kona winner, <laughs> so, so, so for, top 10 at least. I doubt winning Kona, but for those that don't know, this year I entered Norseman as a pro, so I would have been racing Norseman this past weekend. Oh, okay. As a, my first, it would have been my first and only pro race, I think. I wanted to do, I accept that I will never be the fastest out there because I'm a bit old, but I can be one of the tougher guys, so I chose the toughest race to eat to race as a pro and try and see if I can make a, um, a dent in the field. I mean, last storm, last storm I won, I think, Norseman three or four times before. And I mean, he's someone that I, he, thought he helped me a lot through my Kona journey. And I thought maybe if he could do it, I could do it. So I would have raced pro last weekend and unfortunately that got cancelled. And that's why I wasn't going to go to Kona this year again, because you can't race pro and Kona, pro with Norseman and an age group but in the yeah. field. So, but for next year, we'll be back. My focus will be back on Kona and the things. And obviously, sub 8.30. Sub 8.30 at Ironman South Africa and sub 8.30 at Kona. I'm going to have yeah. to do it. That would be incredible. I wouldn't put it past you, because I put it past you a few years ago, and it's costing me some beer now. So You will... <laughs> Quick check here. We've got a question from one of our uh, readers asking us to explain the Superman tattoo, the, the, the Captain America tat. 
Are there, is there any meaning to that in any other tats? I don't know if you want to show us, but maybe I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got two tats that I would like to share. I mean, one is uh, obviously Captain America, and so I like Marvel, clearly. But the story behind it is a lot of people uh, that I meet tells me how antisocial I am and that I uh, do all my training on my own. And the story behind the shield is it's a way for me. I'm a very close person. The shield represents me shielding my family and myself on the outside. I try and keep things simple. I try only hang around people that positive and that positively influence me. So, and as a result, I end up doing most of my things on my own. And that's also on my forearm. I've got a tattoo of a hybrid wolf. And that's because I'm a bit of a lone wolf. I, like, I don't mind spending quality time with myself. And the story behind people calling me out on being antisocial is that, quite frankly, I train lots of hours. It's difficult to fit it in, and I have to fit it in around my family and work. And the easiest for me to do that is at my house, where I can just jump on, finish it, and I don't have to plan around other people. I mean, I don't like to, I don't plan any, other than swimming, I don't plan any other rides or runs or set times in the week because I can never plan that far. I can't say a Thursday morning at six, I'm doing this and Friday night I'm running this because I just don't, if work calls, I'm there. If the family or my kids have something on at school, swimming or running, I'll go watch that. Then the training was move on till tonight. So I just fit it in where I am. So that's the, the, those two tattoos are the most significant meaning for me and then I got the thing called yeah Vini Vidi Vici which means I came I saw I conquered which is also something for me if I if I set my if I set my uh, mind to it I will do it and that's also why I don't like quitting. I mean I it's not always pleasant. I mean one of the things you asked me is do I have ever considered quitting many 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 times and I still do but I kind of try and remind myself why I do it. And you are to set an example for, I mean, after a good race like Kona or Africa Champs, you get messages from out saying, geez, I don't know how you do it. What's the secret? That for me is nice. Not to brag, but to inspire them to show. I mean, you say it yourself. I was no Ferrari when I started out. Not that I am now, but I was a proper donkey. And I think if there's one thing I want people to take away from this is that in 2013, I still smoked with my good friend Hugo Brainard. At the start of the race, I was 98 kilos. I still smoked 40 cigarettes a day. I still smoked <laughs> the Cybers and Red. It was pissing with rain. I still smoked my last cigarette in this warm-up tent. And uh, that was probably the longest I went without a cigarette because I had to suffer for 13 hours without one. And, wow. And, 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 yeah, and from then, I mean, it was just after, after I stopped studying, I did three degrees and my honors and articles and CA, I just looked for something to fill that void. I mean, I'm not someone who likes sitting around watching TV and doing nothing with my time. I like to be busy. <laughs> so and training, training filled that gap for me. I mean, I can, I can sit on the indoor trainer reading a book, teach my kids math, work on my laptop, reply to a few emails, all in one shot. So that for me is not a problem. So I can multitask. I enjoy it. Yes. What can't you do? So Don, uh, um, I can't dance. <laughs> Not at all. Of, speaking of nightclubs or wherever you would dance, you're quite a scary looking oak. You're intimidating on, on, on social media. You're quite a scary oak with your tats. You intend to sometimes give it the big stare when you're lost in your mind. Have you ever moved anyone? Well, what I got to, what, what part that most people won't know is that, and I hope some of my friends from school are watching after, is that. 25, 2005 to 2009, I was a bouncer at Bakamata in, uh, in uh, Durbanville. And at my heaviest, I weighed 125 kilos. From when no. me, and my wife met, me and my wife met at 125 kgs, me a bouncer at Bakamata in uh, Durbanville. And yeah, there I, I, came, I, I had a few scuffles back then. And I mean, but I'm not a fighter in general. I mean, I, I'm a peace-loving oak. And yeah, you know, I don't, I don't like to, I don't like to. I'd rather do the dueling on the bike than with the fists. Yeah, yeah. Well, geez, that's quite a scary thought. And I want to see a picture like that. We're going to put it in the triathlon SPR magazine. I'll send you a WhatsApp right now. Please, the before and after. 
It might not be oh, as God. bad as Reynard Tissink with his peroxide white mullet from years back. We've all had our embarrassing moments. That was in the magazine. I think you might just beat him on this one. So <laughs> now there's obviously a bunch, you talk about that shield shielding you. You're a man who speaks with his feet, Jesse Owen style, which is the way to do it. At your level, with your ability, there's going to be people who are always going to try and bring you down and they're going to call you a dope man. What do you say to those guys? I know you don't you ignore them, which is obviously the immediate thing, but ultimately you want to answer them. What's your take? It's not even something that I... Uh, I don't even know how to respond to those things. I mean, all I know is when I gave my name at Kona, the minute I gave the name, they called me up and sent me for tests, which is a good thing. I mean, I encourage it. And that, if it wasn't for that, a lot of guys wouldn't have been caught. So, I mean, it is... You know, it's not something I even, I've ever even considered. For me, it's the same as stealing. And it's not from my background, uh, being a chartered accountant, when I studied ethics is a big thing for me. It's something I won't break. I'll never risk my name for any, anything in any business. And that's how the people that I work with also know me. I mean, I'm straight. I say things as it is, maybe sometimes to my detriment. But I do that in training. I do that with the people I know, I do it in, for work. And you and I, if people say it, I encourage you to test at any time. I mean, I'll give my address where I live. They can do it. I mean, I've, no, peed, in many I've peed in many bottles. I haven't melted one yet. So I'm happy to carry on this way. And you publicize your training and you put it all out there, your sessions. That's one hundred percent. It's all open to this view. And I love sharing it. I mean, I wish, I wish it is a difficult one also. I mean, I would love for me, I would love to post all my sessions for people to see what I do, not to show off, to see what it takes. But often, you know, I mean, you have had that discussion before. The haters will say, you're trying to show off what you do. For me, it's more to show people what it takes to be at that level in Kona. I mean, it is a hard, it is, what I've achieved, I'm very blessed. I'm thankful I had a good day once again. I mean, I'll never take it for granted. But it took Plenty of hours, plenty of heartache, I mean, plenty of days, not feeling great, fighting with my wife because I had a bad bike session, grumpy with the kids. And it takes big hours and it takes big effort. And I mean, that's why I look even up to Oaks and Jan, you know, I don't know what they do to even be at that level. And I don't know, like you say, will I ever want to race pro? Yes, 100%. But I don't even want to know what it would take to step up from here to be even 30 minutes better in an Ironman, which will be, it'll be a big thing for me uh, to even try and consider because I, you know, it took me a long time to get the confidence to race at the front. Now I'm going to have to have the confidence and now I'll be five minutes off on the swim and trying to chase back to the best of the world. That's the most scariest thought I know. That's why I take my hat off to all the O's who race pro. It is not an easy thing. It's bloody stressful. I stress for amateur race when there's Nothing on the line other than a bit of glory. They race, they do it for a living. I mean, my God. It's like me having to win every day at my office to get my salary in the month. It'll be a hell of a stress. Oh, it's dead. So it is not an easy life. Well, I'm going to put my hand up right here and say, after witnessing you since your university days, we've been a long way. I've seen the hard work. I've seen it all. I've seen you go through the heartbreak. I remember you broke down in East London as well. I was just thinking when you were talking about your breakdown. You've had so much bad luck. You've persevered, you put in serious hours. If there's ever been a role model for South African triathletes to become African age group champion and Kona is unheard of. It's insane. So huge up to you. Thank you for being our guest tonight and for inspiring so many others, for creating energy and noise around triathlon. Long may you last as an ambassador. Don't stop doing the sport just because you're not going to be Kona champion anymore. We want, I want to take you on in your 60s. We can, we can duel it out later, 70s. I can't wait. Eight, eight number. Last word from you, what's your ultimate goal in life? I mean, it, seems, it feels like you've ticked all the boxes. What do you look at when you wake up in the morning? I asked Jan Fredino the same question because he should have probably retired when he was world champion. He'd come back, he beat Langer, he broke the record. He had nothing left to prove. And he said, why should I stop? I can still do this. I'm fast and I love it. So I'm asking you, what's your goal and why are you going to keep going? As long as I uh, enjoy what I'm doing, I'll carry on. And for me, it's now, I never, when I enter a race, I don't like to see it that I'm racing age group 35, 39, 40, 45, whatever. Yeah. And there, I, and that I learned from a guy like Van Gelder. that I mean, the Oak rocks up 46, 48 years old, and he doesn't race 
the 45 to 50 year old category. He races to win. And I know, he's in the, I know that. That's in his nature. And that's for me. As long as I, can, as long as I think I'm competitive, I always want to race for overall. And my goal with this sport is to break my good friend Kyle's South African Ironman record. And now Mr. Dan Plews' record in Kona. And my ideal dream would be to have them there when I do it. So I would like to break it with them being in second place and me being in first. And I'll take on little other challenges like TT biking and those kind of things. And I'll keep showing the haters and the doubters that with hard work and without doping, having an odd beer, having a happy family, having a big job, you can still achieve lots in this world. Amen. What a great note to finish on. I'm sad it's, I'm drinking an alcohol-free beer here because it's lockdown. But we are sharing this together. We have to be uh, uh, in social distancing. We have to be houses apart. But when we come back, it's going to be at least a race to Stanford in January. We're going to drink a lot because that's how we live it. It's a balanced life scenario, and we are super proud of you. And thank you for everything you brought to the sport. Thank you for your time once again, and all your inspiration as always. Cheers.